Hi, I'm Matt Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Andy Heinig of Fraunhofer IIS EAS. We're going to talk today about challenges with chiplets and power delivery. Andy, there's a lot of discussion these days about chiplets. Everybody seems to be heading in this direction. What sort of challenges do you see coming forward? Um, yeah, we see a challenge currently that uh, a lot of companies are working on this die-to-die -die interface, but uh, to get the whole chiplet uh, ecosystem running, we need much more. For example, we see the problem that, no, that only a small number of companies currently working uh, on the power delivery or on new heat removal concepts. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Andy, what are we looking at? What sort of challenges do you see here? Yeah, we have here a typical chiplet system. So we have here the, the chiplet themselves. We see here certain, or this is the, the interposer. Then we have the certain chiplets here on top. And what we see here is also that we need some power delivery uh, elements. So voltage regulators, we also need capacitors and things like that for the power delivery. And what we see is uh, if we get larger chiplets uh, with more uh, chiplet systems with more chiplets on, and we see that the distance between the power delivery and the inner chiplets are going worse on. And this is something that is, makes it very difficult to uh, stabilize the power delivery for, for all these chiplets on this chiplet system. So how many chiplets are typically in a design? Uh, you have three up there, but there could be a lot more, right? Yes, so uh, currently it's that we see uh, uh, it's starting with four or five chiplets. So that's the current uh, situation. But what we see is uh, that we all, that the industry will go quickly to more chiplets, especially on the memory side. So if it's possible to integrate more, uh, everybody is will, will do that in the future. We've seen power delivery issues when we start getting into very advanced nodes. The, the lines and spaces between them are very tight. Getting power to all those transistors is very difficult. Is that the same challenge you're running here with the individual chiplets? Uh, the biggest problem here is the, that the supply voltage for the single chiplets is very low. So it's below one volt and we have very long distance to deliver the power. Uh, on the other side, the, the power grid on the interposer themselves is very small. Uh, we have very small line traces, and that makes it very difficult to, to deliver the, the power. And with that power and that power density also comes thermal issues, right? Yes, for sure. Uh, all the power that we have to bring in is in such systems, and we are talking here about hundreds of watts, is something that we have to remove on the end. And so what are the challenges as you're developing these chiplets? Everybody thought, oh, this is just going to be like Lego blocks. You can put these things together. But the reality is, as you start stacking these things up, you're now dealing with very tight spaces sometimes between there. You're dealing with sometimes very dense circuitry within the chiplets, and your dynamic uh, power density is fairly significant as well, right? Yeah, that's, that's uh, on two sides a problem. On the one side, uh, if we put more chiplets into the system, in general, we sum up then the, uh, the energy we need. And on the other side, uh, between the chiplets themselves, we need a very small uh, line space for, for the signaling. And on the other side, for the power delivery, we need a larger grid. And that means on the interposer, we have to combine uh, different densities. Uh, density is more density for the die-to-die -die interface, but uh, a, a, a large density, a heavy metal for the power delivery. And that makes it very difficult from the manufacturing side. And so now you also have issues that you didn't expect as time goes forward. You think about these chiplets, people have been developing these going, okay, we don't really know where they're going to be used or how they're going to be used, right? Uh, yeah, that's also a problem of the, yeah, the ecosystem is also a problem and it's currently not really clear how we can build such a system. What are the right architectures here? We've seen approaches like backside power delivery coming into SOCs where they're saying, okay, this is the only way we're going to get power to all the different transistors. Does that work in something like this? Um, yeah, uh, we also see maybe concepts that we have totally new approaches that we also have the power delivery here from backside, but that needs new uh, approaches, new re uh, needs more research because these concepts are currently not available. And the other option that uh, people have been talking about for a long time, going all the way back at almost 20 years, is things like uh, microfluidics and that kind of cooling for this too, right? Yeah, de definitely. We have this option. We see it also that some car manufacturers, they want to introduce chiplets in the, in the automotive world. Uh, they discuss such topics, but we have also some disadvantages. 
because then you have a cooling liquid very close to your system and if something is going wrong then you destroy directly your system so where are we in terms of the chipwood uh, market is this real for most people or is it really just for the large idms that can afford to do all this fancy stuff yeah we, that's very interesting we see uh, currently a uh, different new we see currently markets that will be developed in the next time. So we have very interesting discussion with automotive uh, with car manufacturers in Europe because they really see this uh, approach of uh, modularity to build uh, different uh, types of systems with this Lego block style. Uh, it's something that uh, that's very interesting for the automotive world. And part of that is you can just add features by changing out one of the blocks, right? Yeah, this is exactly the, the, the topic that the automotive uh, manufacturers has. They have certain options of the system um, and it's very expensive if they build an SOC every time by, by from the scratch. And so they really want to add some blocks and add functionality in this way and remove some blocks to, to have uh, less functionality. Will this work? You've got a lot of different variables that are going on here, including variation even within the chiplets and how they're made and made by potentially different uh, uh, foundries as well, right? Yeah, that's currently not clear. Also, the whole ecosystem is not clear. But uh, we see from the automotive vendors that they really see the advantage of this approach. But for sure, the technical problems are not solved yet. We see a lot of open questions here. Another issue here is if you don't know how they're going to be used, potentially you can have something that is running, for example, AI, which is pretty much all full bore, run it as fast as you can. You start ending up with things like faster aging, warping, mechanical issues. Has any of that been addressed in any significant way? Um, yeah, with this uh, upcoming number of, or with this increasing number of such systems, uh, more and more designers work on such systems as now we see uh, certain problems popping up that wasn't, wasn't addressed up to now. For example, uh, yeah, this stress topic is definitely something uh, what is popping up now and what we have to solve in the future. And aging is in there as well too, right? You have uneven aging potentially? Yes, that is also a problem, but this is more on the chip side themselves and we have to solve it on the chip side. So currently we are not seeing that much aging on the interposal. So uh, we can separate this in the chip and interposal side. And you talk about the automotive companies in Europe that are looking at this as a, a significant uh, shift in terms of how they add customization. Have they thought through in terms of, is this all going to be developed by them? Is it going to be developed by third parties? How, how do you see this playing out? Um, yeah, it depends on the on the on the company, uh, but we see that the auto, it's 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 a moving back. So we see now that the automotive automotive manufacturer wants to uh, define the system, the overall system wants to define the chiplets, but uh, then they will give it to to, uh, to design companies. They build the individual pieces. So they're sort of rolling back to where they were before, right? When they had ECUs, but now instead of ECUs, you break that down into to different pieces saying, okay, here's your ECU, but you have this option that goes with it. In general, yes, but also then in, the, in, this, in this approach of the chiplets, the automotive manufacturer has to do much more. They have to go more into the details. They need much more simulation, hardware, software, code design now, because they really have to understand now in which uh, part in which chiplet is which functionality. Uh, this is different to the approach before because uh, on the ECU the whole software was running on the SOC so that was not necessary to go that much in detail. Do the companies, the automotive companies, do they really understand how to do all this stuff? That's really not their history, right? That's, that's absolutely true, but in the meantime, they have huge groups for software design, also software co-design, but for sure there is also a gap, and this is definitely a gap that must be filled between software and the real chiplet implementation. So and here on this part, the die-to-die, the, the, the -die, or we have some standards, the die-to-die -die standards, but we are not having yet any standards how we can partition chiplet, what are... Uh, high-level protocols between the chiplets. So some first protocols are now developed, like this AXI buses, things like that. But um, that's not enough for the whole system. We need also better understandings, concepts, how we can split such a system into pieces. And that partitioning is also accompanied by microarchitectures that need to be in there too, right? Because in order to effectively use this stuff, you need that microarchitecture in addition to the macroarchitecture. 
Yeah, for sure. That's that's the big problem. Uh, there is a combination, or it's in the meantime a combination from the hard, from the software up to the first level of hardware, meaning uh, the system concept, but also yeah, the, the micro architecture is influencing the whole system performing performance, and that means we build need very good models of the micro architecture that we see the inf the, the effects of the micro architecture to the whole system performance. Fraunhofer's always pushed models as a way forward in this this area. Are the models developed? Are the standards developed to the point where they're they're usable at this point? And will they ever really be at that level? Yeah, um, we the, the the basic concepts for modeling are available uh, in the meantime. So, but we see uh, missing standards here. Uh, missing concepts how such complex systems can be modeled together and what we also see is uh, we, we see missing standards for for, the, for example to model the die-to-die -die communication so that means also standards uh, like BOW has to develop uh, models in the future so that we can plug easily plug uh, together uh, all these pieces in a, in a huge system model. Is one of the concerns here differentiation because as we move into the chiplet world we get into more standards is there really enough differentiation between the chiplets or does basically one car basically become the same as another yeah that's the, but but this is the main idea from the car manufacturer because they see that most of the functionality is really the same for all the cars and that makes it uh, that makes it easy for them to reuse a lot of chips. The idea is really maybe that 10% is only the differentiation. So this is one chiplet and this is the chiplet they, uh, where each company, each car manufacturer built its own uh, functionality in to differentiate then later also on software side. So it gets everything going a lot faster in terms of the design, but at the same time, they still have their value add. Yes. Andy Heineck, as always, thanks for an interesting discussion. You're welcome.